In this video, we'll be looking at matrices, and we are determining the values of x for which the matrix with components 3x, 4x, and 3 is singular. Now, in order for us to do this, we need to understand what the determinant of a matrix is. So we have a 2 by 2 matrix. In other words, we have two rows and two columns. And so to find the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, this is what we are to do. So let's look at the general form of a 2 by 2 matrix. So we have a matrix here. A matrix, C, matrix, a matrix is basically a rectangular array of numbers. Rectangular array of numbers. In this case, we have two rows and two columns. Now, A, B, C, and D are real numbers, basically. Now, if I want to find the determinant of a matrix, what I need to do is to multiply the first component, A, multiplied by the last component. So let me just write this. Now this symbol with the two strokes, uh, vertical poles, in other words, to the left and right of A means the determinant of A. And to find the determinant of A, we multiply A times D. And we subtract the product of B times C. Now, if matrix A is singular, if matrix A is singular, all you need to understand with this is that the, then the determinant, then the determinant of matrix A is equal to zero. In other words, when we work out A times D minus B times C, we will get zero. That's all it means when it says singular. And the thing about singular matrices, they don't have any inverse. Okay, but that concept is not necessary for this video in terms of uh, inverse of a matrix. But let's look at this now. We're told that this particular matrix with these components is singular. So what it means, therefore, we need to work out the determinant. And once we work out the determinant, we will equate that determinant, or which will be an expression, by the way, to zero, because it says that the determinant of this particular matrix, not the determinant of the the matrix itself is singular. It's a singular matrix, which means that the determinant of it is zero. So let's go ahead. So we're going to multiply A times D, which is 3 times 3 in this case. And we're going to subtract X times 4X, which is 4X squared. Now, since the matrix is singular, it means its determinant is equal to zero. This is the expression for the determinant. Is equal to zero. We can simplify this to nine minus four x squared, and that expression is equal to zero. Now, how do we solve a quadratic equation? Notice that we have a quadratic equation here, and we want to solve for x. To solve a quadratic equation, right? We have several methods we can actually use. But what we notice about this particular quadratic equation is that it's actually the difference of two squares. Right, because 9 is a square number, 4 is a square number, and 4 is attached to x squared. x squared is a square number. 4 is a square number. So it's square root of 9, for instance, is 3. So 3 squared is 9. And the square root of 4x squared is actually, is actually 2x. Because if we were to multiply 2x by 2x, we'll get 4x squared. So these two are square numbers, and we're subtracting two square numbers. When you subtract two square numbers, the concept is referred to as the difference of two squares. Now, before I go any further in solving this, I want to illustrate some, a few, you know, do some few examples so you can understand this better. All right, what if you were asked to factorize? Something like this. If you're asked to factorize, um, let's say you're asked to factorize 25 x squared minus 4y squared. Well, recognizing that 25 is a square number, so is x squared. 4 is a square number, so is y squared. Then these, this particular term, when you find the square root of it, you're going to get 5 x. When you find the square root of 4y squared, you're going to get 
to y. And you can understand why, right? 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 2y times 2y is 4y squared. So these are square numbers. And once we have square numbers, we can factorize them as this. The square root of this is 5. 5x, put it in both brackets. Square root of this is 2y, put it in both brackets. In one bracket, you have plus. Next bracket, you have minus. Okay, so this is another way of representing the difference two squares for what we have up here. Is it really true though? Let's test it with some regular numbers. Let's say we had 25 minus 4 itself. You know 25 minus 4 is actually 21, correct? What if we were to actually do it like this? What's the square root of 25? 5. Let's put it in both brackets. What's the square root of 4? That's 2. Let's put it in both brackets. In one bracket I put plus, the next bracket I put minus. Now, will I, when I work out this, will I actually get 21? 5 plus 2 is actually 7. So it's 7 multiplied by, the brackets mean we're multiplying quantities within them. So it's 7 times, and 5 minus 2 is actually 3. And so 7 times 3 is 21. Correct. So therefore, this expression will be a correct representation of the difference two square terms that we have above. So in a similar way, we can rewrite this as 3, since the square root of 9 that we have here is 3, and the square root of 4x squared that we have here is 2x. So we can write this as 3, 3, the two, four, square root of 4x squared is 2x, let's put 2x there. Do you remember what we said will go here? Plus in one and minus in the other. But remember, the expression is equal to zero. Why is it equal to zero? Because this is a singular matrix and this part of it is the determinant, all right? This is just an, another way of rewriting this or this. Okay, now once we have two quantities multiplying to give us zero, what can be said about those two quantities? Any ideas? Well, think about it. If I have a quantity P multiplied by another quantity Q and I get zero, then what do you believe the values of P and Q could be? Well, we could come up with several numbers, but one thing for sure is either P is equal to zero or Q is equal to zero or P, right? Both P and Q are equal to zero, all right? Could be P equal to zero or Q equal to zero, both being equal to zero, all right? So those are options. If we multiply them, we get zero because only zero times a quantity could give us zero. Now, it means that either this quantity here, which is three plus two X, whatever that works out to is equal to zero or three minus two X, right? When we work it out, we get zero. So either this expression works out as zero or this expression works out as zero. So when we multiply both of them, we end up with zero. So we can write it like what, well, just as we are saying, we say either three plus two X equals zero or three minus two X equals zero. One of them must be zero to get zero. We're not sure which one. Now in solving this, we're gonna subtract three from both sides to give us two X equals negative three and dividing both sides by two we end up with x equals negative three over two in the event you don't understand how we get that we perhaps could do that over here like this um, three plus two x equals zero since it's a linear equation there's no square on it all right no square on the, the expression on either side we can, oh, well, on the variable, I should say, then we can just transpose the quantities, the constants and the coefficient until we isolate the variable. Transposing three, positive three over to the other side, we're left with positive two x, this positive two, this positive belongs to two, so that's positive two x, equal this plus three goes over as minus three, and this is actually two times x, so we're gonna divide this side by two, and divide this side by two, and so we have x, equal negative three over two. So that's how we, I got this here. And doing this part this, as in a similar way, we can say we're gonna subtract three from this side, or we can say we transpose it to the other side over. 
whichever method you use. But if I subtract the 3 from here, I'm left with negative 2x. And if I subtract 3 from 0, I'm left with negative 3. So I'm subtracting 3 from both sides because this is a plus 3 that I have here. But in a similar way, we can say that we transpose plus 3 over as negative 3. Now, this is the equation that we have now. We want to solve for x or isolate x. So we're going to divide this side by negative 2, leaving me, with, leaving me with x. And divide this side over here by negative 2 as well. So if you think about it, negative 2x is equal to negative 3. If I divide by negative 2, and both sides by them, as a matter of fact, by negative 2, into itself, negative 2 goes once. So we have x positive x. The negative divided by negative becomes positive. And so we have positive 3 over 2. So dividing by negative 2 gives me x. Divided by negative 2 over. So these are the two values of x that we have as our solution. Determine the values of x for which the matrix components 3x for x and 3 is singular.